Statistics and Excel Roulette Probability Example Part Number One. Get ready and some coffee because it's time to get realistic with statistics and Excel. Because if you want the real deal, you need the data, dude. And data, that's what we do. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, there are three tabs down below. We've got example, practice, blank, example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The example tab, the one we will be working on, as you can see, blank, will construct the problem from a blank worksheet practicing our Excel skills as we go. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going, what we will be constructing. We're looking at probability more specifically, which we can then broaden out to statistics in general. Some of the great tools and practice problems we can work within probability have to do with games of chance, as we will look at this time with roulette, remembering that sometimes a lot of people like these concepts because it's kind of a game and it's fun to be playing with them. Some people don't because they don't like to imagine themselves like in a casino, for example. However, the concepts of probability have been distilled down to construct these games. That's why they're great examples, because the rules of the games are basically built on the concepts of probability. So even if you're not a fan of, say, gambling, there's still going to be good examples, possibly examples that can show you not to gamble, because, of course, these are going to be coming out uh, an unfavorable, the favorability being on the casino side of things, at least in the long term. But once we get the concepts down, we can then apply them more broadly to other areas of statistics and finance and other areas. So we're looking at uh, the roulette. So we can imagine that we're in like a casino or something like that, or in a fundraiser possibly, and possibly we're gambling for charity or something like that and we have the different options that we can bet on within the roulette wheel. And the question then of course is gonna be, what's the probabilities of winning? Remembering that in the short run, you would expect that anything could happen. You don't know what's gonna happen in any one roll of the wheel. But if we extend it out into the long run, which is the world that the casino is thinking in because they're playing the long game, then you would you would expect that the game would be unfavorable to the player favorable to uh, the casino now note that when you apply these concepts to other areas that's not always going to be the case one of the differences between investing for example and gambling is that in an investment hopefully you have a positive uh, favorability in the long run that's the point of investing. You're trying to invest in the long run in like a retirement account, and you expect in the long term to have an, an, a positive uh, outcome, a favorable outcome. If you're betting in a casino, there's two main kind of games that you might be categorizing into. One would be the casino managing people that are betting against each other, something like poker or like a horse race uh, type of situation where you're pooling the money together and somebody's gonna win all the money that the participants put into the pool, the casino managing that activity is gonna get paid by taking a piece of the pie before it goes to the winner. In that case, you're not really betting against the casino, you're betting against others and paying the casino for the service of setting up the rules. On the other hand, if you're betting against the casino, as we can see here with our roulette wheel, we're, we're paying uh, against the casino, 
or like a blackjack type of situation uh, or a craps situation, then the, they're not going to take a piece of the pie because you're betting against the casino. You would expect, how does the casino get paid? They're going to have favorable odds on the casino side, unfavorable on our side. So you would expect that to be the case. And the proper mindset you would think would be, well, I'm not looking to win in the casino in the long term. It's just a game that you're playing in the long term. You're going to lose and you're going to be paying the casino for the service of hanging out and playing the game or whatever. And then, of course, if you were playing against a friend, you would expect to have a game set up so that you have even odds because the point of the game is to be just playing a game with your friend. You might not be winning or losing as being like the point of the game. All right, that's the general structure. Now, when we look at all the different things we can bet on on the wheel, we can see that we have uh, the individual numbers that we can bet on within the wheel. And then we can bet on the red or black. So we have the red or black. So we can take a look at that. We have the even numbers versus the odd numbers. We can bet on the first 12, the second 12 numbers, the third 12 numbers, and so on and so forth. So those are the main things that we can look at, which seem complex to look at all those different things that you can bet on, which have different payout ratios and so on and so forth. But they are all basically kind of independent from each other. So we can take a look at each of those individual things that we could bet on and look at the long term and see what the expected value is on the long term. And we'll generally find that that, that looks like this game was constructed with a, an expected value built into it, basically. That's basically what you would get from most of the types of bets that you are making. So that's kind of the conclusion. We'll give the conclusion away a bit at the beginning. So first, how are we going to do this? Well, we will cons we will kind of uh, number uh, our, our numbers on the wheel, remembering that we're going to have a zero and a double zero. That's what's going to skew the, some of the probabilities uh, that, that of the outcomes that could come up. And then we'll take a look at betting on red versus black. Uh, we'll take a look at then uh, betting the first few numbers, one through 12. Uh, and then betting on one number. And then we'll try to run some scenarios and say, can I empirically test this uh, somehow? And so we'll try to say, is there a way that I can come up with random number generations to empirically test this and practice our probability concepts? And you can use these same ideas to construct you, you know, a scenario of random chance game you know, in Excel if you wanted to. Uh, try to try to like build your little game or something like that with the random generation tools within Excel. Now the practice tab has pre-formatted cells, so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. We're going to go to the blank tab and fill the fill this out as we go. So let's go ahead and put the picture in here. Put the picture in here. Now if you don't have the picture, you could find a picture of the good old uh, roulette wheel. So here we go. But we're going to pick that one up. So first thing we're going to do. I'm going to hold down control and scroll in a little bit. So let's go. I'm at 190 down here, you can see. And then I'm going to close that up. I'm going to format the entire worksheet as we typically do to start off with taking the triangle here and then right clicking not on the picture, but somewhere on the cells and format those cells. I'm going to make them currency, negative numbers bracketed and drop down dollar sign uh, is gone and I'm going to remove the decimals adding back the decimals as we need and okay then I'm going to make the whole thing bold by going to the home tap font group you got to be bold if you're betting on the don't be don't be stupid but be bold just like James Bond when he bets in the casino he does it he always wins and like he looks all cool and everything that's how you have to do it but if you don't want to make it all bold like that you don't have to I just think it looks better on the screen casting possibly easier to see all right, first thing we're going to do is let's let's actually put numbers uh, to the numbers on the wheel. So you can see here that that it's kind of scrabbled around. So it's like, how many numbers are there? So they tried to make it, I don't know exactly why they scrabble the numbers like this, uh, but possibly to make it look a little bit more fancy or whatnot. And I don't know. But you can see that there's going to be, if we looked at the numbers and analyzed them, we have 36 numbers. But... Then we also have the green zero and the double zero, which we have to factor into our account. So I'm gonna say, all right, the numbers, that means there's gonna be 38 numbers. So I'm gonna say one, two, 
And I'm going to take those and I'm going to copy them down and say, okay, how many numbers are on this thing? And uh, and so there's thir there's 34 or 36 and then the zero and the double zero bringing it to 38. So 38 numbers. All right, let's make this black and white as a header. Home tab, font group, we'll make that black and white. Uh, is that right there? Okay, and let's let's center it to alignment and center. I'll make this smaller, double clicking between the J and the K, making it a little smaller. Okay, so then we're gonna say that the the actual numbers on the wheel. So so the numbers on the wheel. I'm gonna say there's a one a zero, and then a double zero. Now to put the double zero, I could like do this. Uh, that's going to be the apostrophe and double zero. So now it's in there as a text field, but I'd like it to be a zero again. So maybe I'll put like 0 0.01 or something like that. And then I'd like to see the two zeros. So I'm going to go to the home tab numbers and then add a decimal. Well, I, I wanted to put 0 0.01. So there now it's a double zero. I'm going to put it in there like that. So it doesn't really matter because we're just having a placeholder here. And then I'm going to start at number one, number two, and I'm going to drag these down and go down and we'll see we get to uh, 34 of the, uh, I'm sorry, 36. I keep on wanting to say 36 of the actual numbers. So that's how we're going to see it. So how many numbers are on the wheel? There's one through 36 plus a zero and a double zero. Now it might be easier to put the zero and the double zero on the bottom and think of the zero and the double zero as uh, numbers uh, 37 and 38. But I wanna put them on the top here just to emphasize the fact that that of course is the thing that's gonna be skewing the odds uh, oftentimes possibly, or one of the things you know in uh, the casino's favor because when we bet on like one through 36, we're not, we're not having the likelihood of just one of those numbers show up, one over 36, but it's actually one over the 38. Now it gets a little bit more complicated because you have to match that to the payout. Remember when we're thinking about expected value, we have to think about the likelihood of the number coming up and the payout situation in order to calculate the expected value. All right, so I'm gonna go to the home tab, num font group, black and white, and let's center that one. And then let's choose all of these and go control shift down and I'll make them blue and bordered home tab font group. And I usually like that blue right there. If you don't have that more colors standard, we'll make that blue. Okay. And put some borders around it. All borders. All right. So there's going to be that one. I'm going to make a skinny L now. Let's make a skinny L column. And then we'll say, okay, let's analyze one thing at a time. Let's not get too overwhelmed here. Let's say we start off with bet on red or black. So that's the easiest thing to start off with. I'll just take my million dollars and I'll just put it on red or black, right? And let it roll, let it ride. <laughs> so let's start with that one. So we're going to say, uh, let's select these two. We're going to go home tab font group and uh, say it's going to be black and white. All right, so what's gonna be the payout? If we bet on red or black, then it's generally gonna be a one for one to one payout. So the payout is gonna be one to one, which I could say, I'm just make this the header. Do, do. I'm gonna say black and white home tab, font group, black, white. Let's say the payout is gonna be one to negative one. So what does that mean? Well, you put your, your dollar, let's just stay with a dollar, on like red and then uh, if red comes up then they put another dollar on top of your dollar and you take the two dollars back one being the one that you put out there so you got you earned you win a dollar if you put your dollar on red and it comes out black then they take your dollar but not only if it comes out black it could come out green you can see <laughs> and they still take your dollar right so that's going to be that. So you might see it this way. If, if you say win, you get $1. And if you a loss or lose, you get negative $1. So we're going to think about it as payouts, negative payouts being the losses, right? So let's select these. I'm going to go to the home tab, font group, 
borders and make that blue. Okay, so so then let's think about the odds. What are the odds of getting red or black? So the odds of a win or a loss, and then I'll say the total, because we can total up these odds with our double checking, kind of like an accounting system. We're going to select these items, home tab, font group, bucket drop down, black, white. I'm going to center it and we'll say the odds of it being red or black or our pick. Let's, let's say, let's say, just say we bet on red just cause whatever bet on red. And then we're going to say, that's the one we picked. What's the odds that we're going to win? You'd think it'd be like a coin flip 50, 50, but it's not because the, the green ones are throwing it off. So, Let's do it this way. We have 34 colors, like what is it? 36. I keep on wanting to say 34. 36 divided by two are red or black. Now they kind of mess it up here because you would think it's not like uh, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19, 21. So it's kind of looks like a little bit of a jumbled kind of mess to see which ones are red or black because of course they'd like to make it a little bit different of betting red or black than just betting even or odds, right? <laughs> I think that's one reason they kind of jumble up the colors, but the concept is gonna be quite similar, of course, that you would think that basically half of, of the actual numbers are red and half of them black, right? So we're gonna say that's gonna be the red out of the total numbers. And the total numbers is not uh, double that, but rather it's gonna be this plus i'm sorry let's it's going to be let's just type it down here it's going to be equal to 38 plus 2. let's say 36 plus 2 or 38 because i'm saying 36 because there's 36 numbers plus 2 for the zero and the double zero all right so what are the odds uh that we lose well the odds that we lose is equal to there's 38 total numbers so i'll pick this one up uh, minus the 18 numbers. So there's 20 numbers that can come up that we lose, which of course is greater than the 18 because of the zero and the double zero, and they're still out of 38. So then if we, uh, if we add these up equals the sum of these two, we get 38 over 38. That has to be the case because the two of these options must equal to one. So either we win at an 18 over 38 chance, or we lose at a 20 over 38 chance, which of course all of the odds have to add up to 100% or in this case 38 over uh, 38. So if I was to say, okay, then let's just look at this odds in a percent format. What are the odds that we win? 18 divided by 38. Let's percentify to recognize. Home tab, number group, percentify to recognize. And there we have it. What's the chance that we lose? Equals 20 over 38. And so let's go to the home tab, uh, blah, 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 numbers percent. And then the total, of course, I can do this way, 38 over 38, or I can sum it up this way, equals the sum of these two, and we should get to the 100%. 100%, there it is, boom. Let's make those blue and bordered. Home tab, font group, bordered and blue. All right, well, if that's the case then, uh, then what's my expected value? Expected value, it, let's make this black and white. Home tab, font group, boom, black, white. All right, so well, if I win, I'm gonna get a dollar, right? The payout is a dollar. And my expected chance, my odds of winning are 4737. So that's going to be home tab, number group percent, and add some decimals. So then if I multiply that out, one times 37, 4737, sorry about that. I'm going to get, let's make this, keep this at a decimal. Du, 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 du. And then let's keep it down one, like right there. And then 
a loss, I lose a dollar on a loss, let's say equals, we're gonna lose a dollar, and that's gonna happen, the odds of that happening are 52.63. So number group percentify adding decimals. So this equals the negative one times 52.63% of the time, adding some decimals. And that's gonna give us the expected value equals the sum of these two. Let's add some decimals. Duh, 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 duh. Let's do one more. There we have it. So we'll make that blue and bordered, picking that up and making it bordered and uh, blue. And so uh, there we have it. Let's put some underlines here. So obviously the, the idea then being that if I'm going to bet red or black, the, 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 the likelihood per, per roll, I have an expected value that's going to be negative. So we expect to lose 0.052 uh, cents, right, uh, per, per roll, 0.052, uh, 5.2 cents, you know, per roll. But obviously any roll that we have, we're not going to lose five cents on the first roll. What's going to happen? We're either going to win a dollar or we're going to lose a dollar. We have no idea what's going to happen in the first. It's just the odds are such that it's going to be not 50-50, but 47-52. But if we were to play it over and over for a long term time, we would expect the probability to go towards the outcome of having an expected value of 0.0526. That's, of course, what the casino is is uh, playing on. So they're guaranteed to win in the long run if the probability stays constant, which it should because they built the game based on the probability, in essence, that they're going to win about uh, you know 5.2 cents per expected value over the long run. So what does that tell us? It tells us, well, what, obviously betting on a casino for long-term investments is not good, right? It tells us that that you might win in the short run. And if you do, and you actually want to keep your winnings, then you, you, wanna, you beat the odds in the short run, and you probably want to leave the table at that point. Or it tells us, of course, that if we're in a gambling situation in a charity or a casino, that in the long run, you're probably thinking of it, I'm sitting here to play a game and I'm paying the casino most likely uh, in order to facilitate just the sitting here playing a game, talking to people and playing the game. And you're doing so by the fact that you're going to, you have unfavorable <laughs> odds, obviously is the general idea. Now we will test this later and say, okay, can I empirically test that possibly in Excel and say, can I run a scenario where we can simulate uh, roulette rules with the random generation example in Excel and test out these probabilities. We'll do that later. Other thing to point out is that sometimes because there's an even payout one to one, we start to say, well, that means it's a fair game. It seems fair because you say, well, it's an even payout, but that's of course not the case. It's an, it's an unfair game, even though you have an even payout because the two things that we have to consider to see if it's fair or if, if it's unfair or if it's even, are going to be the payout versus the probability. So here we have an even payout, but of course the probability is skewed, you know, in the casino's uh, favor is, the, is going to be uh, the general idea. Now, obviously, in some of the other things that we pick, which we'll take a look at later, if I was to pit out, pick one number, then it's not going to be a one-to-one -one payout. We would, of course, the only way we would bet on one number is if they pay us significantly more than 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 one to one uh, because the odds are so bad but we can still come up with an even game that way so then the question is what would the payout structure have to be to make an even game in the long run if you were to pick like one number which is unlikely to to come up right and so we'll take a look at that uh, in future presentations